In this video, I'll show you how to create this using the Symfony PHP framework. A registration page where users can register a new account, followed by a login page where they can authenticate with the account they just created. To follow along, you'll need to know the basics of how to use Symfony. I do have a video on that and there's a link to it in the description. Let's start on the command line by creating a new application using the Symfony CLI tool. I'll call it example app. I'll include the web app flag as this will be a traditional web application. So this will include things we need like Twig, the maker bundle and so on. This will install the framework and related components into a directory called example app. Let's change into that directory then let's run the local built-in development server with the symphony serve command. The development server is now running at this address. In a browser, let's go to that address to check it's working OK, and there we see the symphony welcome screen. I'll leave the web server running and open a new console window in the same directory. Next, let's create a controller and template to display a home page. We do this first because as we'll see shortly, when we generate the registration form, it will ask for a page to redirect to after successful registration. Let's use the Symfony console application to generate a controller called home. I don't want the PHP unit tests, so I'll just press enter to accept the default answer of no. As we just created this application as a web application, the Twig component is installed, so this has also generated an associated template. Let's open the home controller class that was generated. By default, the index method in this class has a root of slash home, but let's change this to just a slash. Inside this method, it's rendering the template that was generated, so let's open that. Inside the body block, let's delete this example code and just replace it with an h1 element. Back in the browser, if we refresh this page, we now see the homepage template. Note that this blue background is coming from the default styles installed by the asset mapper. Next, we need to create a class to represent the user that's going to register and log in. We need to do this before we create the registration form, as the generator for that needs to know about the user class. Back on the command line, we'll use the user generator to do this. I'll accept the default name of the class, which is user. Do I want to store the user data in the database? Yes, I do. The unique display name for the user, I want to be the email. This is what the user will identify themselves with when they log in. And yes, we need to hash and check user passwords. This has created user entity and repository classes. We don't need to edit these classes, but you can if you want to. Here in the user entity class, this contains annotations that Doctrine uses to create the corresponding table in the database. To do this, we need to create a migration. Before we do that, we need to configure the application with the database connection settings. So in the .env configuration file, let's scroll down to the database URL section, and I'll change the default Postgres setting to use SQLite instead, accepting the default location and file name. Back on the command line, now we can generate and run the migration. If we have a look at the database itself, there's the user table with, among others, columns to store the user's email and password. Now we have the database table in which to store the user data, let's create the registration page. We'll do this on the command line with the registration form generator. As we can see, this is generating a registration form for the user entity class we just created. First, this asks us if we want to add a unique entity validation attribute to the user class so that duplicate accounts aren't created, which we do, so I'll respond with yes. Do we want email verification of the user's email address? Not for this example, so I'm going to say no. That will be covered in another video.
Do we want to automatically authenticate the user after registration? I prefer not to do this, so I'll say no. Then we're asked which route to redirect to after registration. All of these routes are used by the profiler, but the last one is the homepage route that we added earlier. This is why we created the homepage first before we ran this generator. I'll select the homepage, but note that this can easily be changed from the code, which we'll see how to do later on. Finally, do we want PHP unit tests? And not for this example, so I'll say no. This has created a registration form type, a controller, and a corresponding template. We can now go to slash register in the browser, and we see the registration form, with fields for the email and password. Before we try this, let's very quickly add some basic styles, so this looks a bit better while we're developing it. I like to use a classless style sheet like Simple CSS, which adds basic styling without us having to add any classes. To use this, all we need to do is copy a link tag that links to the style sheet on a CDN like this one. Then in the base template, let's paste that link. Let's also open the application style sheet in the assets folder and remove the default body style. Now if we reload the register page, we have some simple basic styles. Let's try registering a new user, entering an email and password, and checking the Agree Terms checkbox. When I click the Register button, we're redirected to the homepage. In the database itself, there's the record containing the email address I specified, and the password, but note that the password is stored as a hash and not in plain text. Let's go back to the registration page and try registering again with the same details. Now we get a validation error, saying there is already an account with this email. This is caused by the unique entity validation attribute that we added when we generated the registration form. There's also validation on the password, making the user enter a password of at least six characters. There is validation that makes the email field required, but note, however, that if I supply a value that isn't a valid email address, but I do supply a valid password, then the validation passes. In the database, this has created a record with an invalid email address. So let's add validation to the email field on the registration form. The existing validation for the registration form is defined in the registration form type class in the build form method. Here we can see the form that has been generated with the email field, the agree terms checkbox and the password field. There is validation on the checkbox and password fields, but not on the email address. As no options have been specified for the email field, it will be rendered as a text input. First, let's change this to an email type input. Note that so we can use this class without its namespace, we need to add a suitable use statement at the top. While we're here, let's also input the email validator constraint, which we'll be using in a moment. Then, after the type, let's add the options array and specify the validation constraints. We'll specify that this field can't be blank with a suitable validation message. We'll also specify that it's a valid email address, likewise with a suitable message. Now in the browser, if we go back to the registration form, if I enter an invalid value for the email address, we get a validation error, asking us to supply a valid email address. Note though that this is HTML validation and not validation messages that are coming from the server. The HTML email input validation is a bit less restrictive than the Symfony validator and allows email addresses like this. However, if I submit this, although it passes the HTML email validation, it doesn't pass the server-side validation in Symfony. If I enter a valid email address, making sure it's one that doesn't exist, then it passes the validation. Next, let's add the login page. On the command line, let's run the login form generator. 
The default name for the controller class is security controller. However, I prefer to call this login controller, so I'll specify that. Yes, I want a logout URL, and no, I don't want unit tests. This has generated a login controller and associated template. In the browser, if I go to slash login, there's the login form. It has client-side validation, and if I enter a valid email, but not one that corresponds to a registered account, then we get an invalid credentials message. Likewise, if the email address has been registered, but I put the wrong password. If I enter valid credentials, then we're redirected to the home page. This page doesn't give any feedback as to whether the user is logged in or not. But if I go back to the login page, it says at the top that I'm currently logged in, and there's a link to the log out page. If I click that, this takes us back to the home page. Now if I go back to the login page, this message is no longer displayed. In the login page template, the code that shows this message is here. It's checking the user property of the app object, which contains an object of the user entity class if the user is logged in. Otherwise, it's null. Inside this block, it's displaying the user identifier property of that object, which we chose earlier to be the email property. We then have a link to the logout page using the named root for that URL. Let's add something like this to the home page so we can see if we're logged in or not. So let's start by copying this block of code. Then in the home index template, paste it after the h1 element. Let's keep this simple and replace this div element with a paragraph. Then let's add an else block to this, so if there isn't a logged in user, let's display links to the register and login pages. Let's have a look at that. So note we're not currently logged in, and if we go to the home page, we see the register and login links. Let's go to the login page and log in with a valid account. And when we get redirected back to the home page, we see the login message. If I click log out, we're redirected back to the home page and we see the previous message. One more change I would make is in the registration controller. When we generated this, we selected the home page route to redirect to after a user successfully registers. As I opted not to log the user in automatically immediately after registering, it would be more user friendly here to redirect to the login page. You could also add a flash message before this to display a message saying that registration was successful and you can now log in, but I'll leave that up to you. So that's the basics of user registration, login and logout using Symfony. There's a link to all the source code shown in this video in the description, along with links to sites shown and relevant videos. If you found this useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Many thanks to my supporters on Ko-Fi, and as always, thank you for watching.